We are so, so grateful today to have Bishop Yvette Flunder with us from the West Coast, bringing our time zones together, morning there, afternoon here. We're praying in the spirit that, 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 that is over all the earth. So it's so good to be together. Uh, I, I certainly want to give a proper introduction. Uh, yes. Bishop Flunder is uh, the founding pastor of the City of Refuge Church in San Francisco, which I had the uh, great joy and privilege of uh, visiting some years ago and uh, being the guest preacher at somewhat by accident because my friend, <laughs> Bishop Barber, who I was traveling with, got sick on the way. So he said, you go ahead to San Francisco and uh, take the word with you. I, I did my best, but it was a joy to be there uh, uh, and uh, Bishop Flunder is the founder and uh, 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 organizer, really, of um, this uh, College of Affirming Bishops that we want to talk about today. I think it's such an important piece of um, this uh, uh, mark that we're talking about for the month of April of, you know, what it means to uh, be part of the church, to submit to the church, to find safety in a church that has also been a place of harm. And so how do we have structures that can provide safety and accountability for us? We want to talk about that today. But I also wanted to say that um, for those of you who don't know, Bishop Flunder is not just a great preacher, but is a preacher who can also sing. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for leading the song. Today. I, I, have a, I have a gospel music list that I run to sometimes, and I always love it. I've got on there uh, the acapella version you did of Didn't It Rain, and when it mm. comes on, I run a little faster because <laughs> I think it Didn't It Rain. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome, welcome to our common prayer and to this common prayer community, folks all over the world who've been using this book, Common Prayer, to pray together. Now we're in our 10th year of, of yeah. uh, using this resource together. It's, it's united a lot of us in praying together and remembering the story of God's people and the church together and of uh, uh, our commitment to work and be part of God's work for justice in the yes. world. So yes. we try to weave all those things together in prayer. And it's a, it's a great joy for you to be with us to have you with us thank you thank you so much for coming good to see you yeah this thank, you. thank you both appreciate it well could we start by um just uh, inviting you to share some of your own story i know we had this reading i talked to shane about it we had this reading today from jean vanier mm -hmm. who uh was uh, certainly an inspiration to many of the communities that put this resource together. Mm -hmm. And since his death, uh, we have learned that he was an abuser. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, uh, that reality is the reality for so many people in the church. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about being part of the church and even submitting to the authority of the church, I think the first thing we have to acknowledge is that so many people have been hurt by the church. Yeah. And I know you have negotiated that yourself. I, I wonder if you would just share some of your experience with folks who are on with us today. Well, I definitively appreciate the opportunity to share with you, my brothers, and all of those who are connected to us virtually. Uh, what a joy to be in the company of the saints, as we said, in the in the classical Pentecostal church that raised me. Uh, and I might say that uh, to, to begin with what it is that you have uh, framed as a question for me, that the greatest flaw, I believe, of the church, the church that raised me, um, and I think many others that have had these experiences, is to somehow telegraph that our coming and being a part of the faith-based organizations and churches that we are a part of made us perfect in some way. Mm. And it's very much like the, uh, the, the little children's story um, that talks about the, the emperor's new clothes, you know, mm. that the concept was, as you know, there were these little mice that had this magical thread and they were creating, they said, allegedly, these beautiful garments, but only the wise could see them. And they would put them on people 
allegedly, and people would pretend that something beautiful was on them mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't be thought of as unwise. When in truth, one little child said when he passed them, everyone is naked. Mm -hmm. um, it, is a, it is a real uh, statement in my thinking that connects to what it was that we created in, in conservative Christianity and in some case, cases, mega conservative. And as I said, I'm a, uh, raised by classical Trinitarian Pentecostals. And we just believe virtually 75% of the population of the world was going to hell. There's just no question about it. And it did not matter to us <laughs> whether you went to church or not, you were still going to hell. For, mm. You know, heaven was going to be like one of our convocations. All of our people were going to be there, but most of the rest of the people were not. <laughs> You know, because you could just go to hell for everything. I mean, this, I just anything you can think of probably right now mm. could send you to hell. That was the way that I was raised. Mm. That was the experience that I had. And it created a, um, a pushback in some ways from people who were culturally, uh, fiscally, um, racially diminished to have power in a powerless environment. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you may think little of us, but God thinks that we are the cat's meow. And when it's all over, God is going to cause us to reign mm -hmm. and, and in some way others to pay. It, it, it's the salve, it's sort of the, the comfort for a, a marginalized people. And often fundamentalist religion is most present among people who feel marginalized in some way by the societies that connect to them. That's the way it begins. Even right now, people who have experienced it, even among some of my uh, counterparts and the folks that push back against me hard that, that are supremacists, white supremacists, or, or uh, uh, anti-women supremacists, or anti-LGBT supremacists, whatever the case may be, who push back against freedom and justice and conversations uh, hide behind the shield of having a, a important seat with God, mm -hmm. even if they are themselves poor. It does not, it, it, it still does not negate the supremacy of their race or the supremacy mm -hmm. of their gender, or the supremacy of, of their faith path. So I think that it is a response mm -hmm. to a people who feel diminished at times mm -hmm. for this reality to exist. And so that's a long answer to a short question, but my experience has taught me over time that the most oppressive people are the people who feel the most oppressed. Mm -hmm. and, and in my experience, um, as a person who has experienced exile um, from the church of my youth, I'm a, a third generation uh, clergy person, the first woman, however, ordained mm -hmm. in my family. Um, I'm not, my mother, my grandmother, my aunts were not new to preaching, but they couldn't call it that. Mm. They had to call it something else. They mm. couldn't ascend. They couldn't stand in the pulpit. They had to speak from the floor. They were always um, things that reminded women that women were secondary mm. and not primary in, in many ways. Um, when I felt myself called to ministry, what was married to my call to preach and teach the, the life and the work and the heart of Jesus in the world. It, it, I was not able to preach the authoritarian Jesus. I was not able to preach the diminishing Jesus. I was not able to preach the, the one who, you know, loved a handful of folks and didn't love the rest. You know, it was, I was not able to preach that Jesus, which got me in deep doo-doo. So that was a, <laughs> mm -hmm. a part of it. And I'm a woman, you know, mm -hmm. and fully affirming um, of the LGBT community, as you know, and open and honest. I do not lie, you know, mm -hmm. I do not, I do not pretend mm -hmm. because these are things that I have learned over time um, are not helpful for the church. Mm -hmm. So I know exile and that's the thing I'm trying to get to. I know exile, mm -hmm. but I want to go all the way to the end and say this to you, beloved. If there's one thing I thank God for every day of my life. I thank God for exile. Mm. Mm. 
And it in and the reason that I do is that I don't think that you can really come to know God until you have had some real alone time with God. Mm -hmm. I think about the 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 start of Jesus' earthly ministry began with being tempted of Satan in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And you can't imagine why would Jesus be, how could Jesus be tempted? The Jesus that we've created as Christianity to some degree mm. is not supposed to be able to be tempted. But if he, if he wasn't tempted, then it wasn't an authentic temptation. Let's put it mm. that way. But mm. Come if, on. if he's tempted, he's tempted by the systems of the world, by power. You understand what I'm saying? Um, by almost suggesting that he had magic abilities to do certain things and he could do those things according to the temptation. And he pushed back against the temptation, but he went right from there, if we're to believe chronologically, to the temple, to his home synagogue, and stood with the men and read from the scroll of Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it has called me essentially to do this line of justice things, mm -hmm. right? To bring good tidings to the poor. You know what it says. It, that's what he got coming out of the wilderness. That's what we get coming out mm. of exile. But we have to go in exile mm. sometimes for what, what we believe. And you lifted up something a minute ago. I remember Carlton Pearson. Mm as someone very connected to the religious right. I considered him the black poster boy for the religious right in this country. You know, a Republican who was also born and raised in the Pentecostal church and the Church of God in Christ, the church I was raised. Didn't Oral Roberts oh, call him his black son? That's exactly him? what he did. And he was the bomb diggity, as we call it in, in the street when we're talking about this, you know. Um, and, and that he was their guy. And I remember sitting on the edge of, of a bed in a conference, a hotel one day, and we had a chat. And he started talking to me about not believing in a literal hell or not believing in, in the ways in which Jesus was being presented. And I told him, I said, babe, let me tell you something. If you tell these folks what you just told me, they're going to cut you off at the knees. Let's just be clear. <laughs> if you take their hell from them, they don't have anywhere to send me and mm. folks like me. And they are going to really be mad at you. It's, oh, no, but he's, and he started talking about what he had learned. Anyway, long to, I'm sure I'm talking too long. But then he said to me, he said, but it is what I believe, Yvette. I said, well, I'm just telling you what I think. So, and, and, and it went on, it went on. Anyway, you know the rest of the story. They wanted to kick him out of the college. They wanted to destroy him, diminish him, uh, put him in. And he lost everything. Hmm. We're talking about incredible exile now. We, mm. Not just money, power, connections, simply because he wanted to present a Christ that was Christ for all. <laughs> mm. Mm. And the first place that he went when he emerged from that place was an invitation that we made to him. And mm. Spirit said to me, just to affirm who you are here today, brothers, and those that are listening to us, Spirit said to me, send for a basin of warm water, hallelujah, mm. Mm. and some towels. Mm. He'll tell you this story himself. Mm. And we brought the people around. We surrounded him, all of us who know exile. Mm. And we washed his feet, mm. much like the passage today. Mm. You, you can't be part of us if we can't wash your feet. Mm. Mm. We washed his feet, and that, in many ways, as he has said it, was the launch of his what's next. Mm. What it was that he was to begin. How many people do you know would have walked away from what Carlton Pearson had mm. if they did not truly believe that God has called us to something greater mm. than simply being caught under the, the, the pressure to conform Mm. religiously when we don't do not have a true relationship mm. and intimacy with the divine and i declare to you we cannot learn it mm. except we have a wilderness mm. and exile a place where we are sure as sure when we are alone as mm. we are when we're in a crowd 
<laughs> as sure as we are with the people that love us, as we are with the people that hate us. Mm. Whether I abound, was it Paul said, or I'm a base. Mm. I do know in whom I have believed <laughs> and I am persuaded mm. that Christ is able to keep what I have committed against that day. That day. So mm -hmm. that is my heart. Um, this is a profound insight about yeah. exile and how we meet God in that. Uh, Jesus' own experience. I mean, I think about it in the context of Holy Week. Yes. You know, Jesus yeah. is going from this Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane. Could he have faced Gethsemane if he hadn't been in the wilderness? That's, the, I think that's the question you're putting before us. And I know so many people experience, are experiencing exile from the traditions they were raised in, from the church that they've known. And I wonder from this beautiful testimony that you're offering, what is it that made it possible for you to cling to Jesus when, <laughs> when the people who had taught you about Jesus were <laughs> rejecting you? Yes. What makes that possible? You know, I have, there's a lot of gospel music out there right now that I call them Jesus is my boyfriend songs. You know, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> you, I, I won't call the names of them because I don't want to anger my friends and colleagues, but, <laughs> but what, what I, what, what I am connected to mm -hmm. is the power of spirit as you are, that gives, it, it's the beauty of alone time with God. It is, the, it is the part of my life that, that is introverted. It is not extra, extroverted. I'm, I am not a prayer time person. And people say I get up at six, I get up at five, and that is my prayer time. I tell them I don't have a time that's not a prayer time. No, and I mean that literally. My soul prays. I sing to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Nobody has to be around to hear me. I was having the best time with them. Um, uh, I come to the garden alone hmm. while the dew is still on the roses. So, you know, and he walks, walks with me. With me. Yeah. With me and, and I'm telling you, it's, I, it's hmm. the opportunity to feel in the presence of the divine hmm. when it's just me. And it strengthens me. And so what, what I realized both when I was very much engaged in the church of my youth is those old ladies, it was a bunch of old sisters. They, they were called the prayer warriors. You know, they, they were the ones that stayed with you to, to pray you through to the Holy Ghost in the Pentecostal church, you know, and they'd stay till midnight until, you, you know, <laughs> till they prayed you through to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But what they taught me, those old women, Mother Virgie Lee Hunter, Mother Jessie Mae Gatson, those, those old women taught me how to find intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I, I minister to myself in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. But, to intimacy with God. So when I was separated from the denomination, it didn't separate me from intimacy with God. And when they told me that I was no longer in God, it just tickled me. I didn't, I didn't argue with them. I said, well, bless your heart. I mean, inside myself, I said, bless your heart. That one thing right there, you can't take that from me. Mm. You can't do anything about that. You don't have anything for that. <laughs> you understand me? The world because didn't give it and the world can't the take, world, it take it away. <laughs> and the church didn't give it and the church can't take it away. Religion didn't give it. Religion can't take it away. Mm. Power didn't give it and power can't take it away. The point is that at the base part of who we are, I encourage people, find your way. Mm to intimacy with God, the kind of intimacy if there was no Bible to read, hmm. if, there, if there were no preachers to preach to you, if there was no canon to follow, if, if there was no book of law and order hmm. denominationally, who are you in the presence of God? 
because somebody had to write it who was in the presence of God. Do you understand? So who are you? Like the writer of the Hebrews says, and it's not on tablets of stone. It has to be written on the tablet that is your heart. I encourage people so that when you go into exile, you're still in relationship. <laughs> and it's the same relationship when it's just you and God then when you're in the presence of thousands of people, mm. it is still that intimacy. Mm. And how do you treat a friend? How do you come to know a friend? You talk to them, mm. you experience them, you walk with them. Mm -hmm. That's why I like that in the garden. You, you commune with them. Mm. And God speaks more without words than with words. Mm. Mm. Because God moves, I believe, our heart and our mind and our thoughts. Things come into your mind. I know I'm talking to preachers now and teachers. I know who, who you are. And we call it, we wait for the hook. Lord, what would you have me to do with this? And then something mm -hmm. comes in your spirit and says, and then you say, that's right. Then you can go do your research. <laughs> you can write your paper. Mm -hmm. But what you need from spirit is the direction the clarity of thought. Hmm. What should I do next in this impossible situation? And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, am I right? Yes. Their strength. Yes, yes. Hmm. And they will mount up like eagles, run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And let me say this to all of those who talk with us today. That is not the way that folks usually set the pattern. Hmm. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Usually what people do is walk first, hmm. then they run and then they fly. If you understand, if you understand. Yeah, yeah. But the way that this is written, it sounds like people do the flying first, then they slow down a little bit, and then they run, and then they slow down a little bit, and then they walk, which, I think that when you come to know God, you, mm. don't, you don't do as much flying and, and running. What you do is a lot of walking. Mm. Like the song said in the garden, you spend time. We're not, we're not in a hurry mm. when we are waiting to hear from mm. the divine. But that also suggests confidence mm. in the relationship the confidence that I can sit right here. I'm gonna stay right here till you tell me what to do next. I say, well, the house is on fire. I'm gonna stay right here until you tell me what to do next. Well, everybody is outside in, they, they, they outside with signs and they run up and down the street. Great. I'm gonna stay right here until I hear from the divine mm. Jesus mm. in the garden. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna tell you I'm upset. Mm. I want this cup to pass from me. Mm. Jesus did not want to die. People say, well, you know, he, no, he did not. His humanity did not want Calvary. He did not want crucifixion. He did not. And mm. he asked that it would pass from him. Mm. I, can we do this another way? That's the heart of the statement. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. But in the prayer, he came up with the nevertheless, nevertheless. Not mm. my will. Mm. Who wants to die in a crucifixion? Who would want to do that? Mm. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. That's the heart of, of intimacy with God that will move us to the hard justice work. We go to jail, we go to jail. We get branded, we get branded. You know, they won't give us the grants, they don't give us the grants, you know. <laughs> People put us in the newspaper, we have to deal with it. <laughs> because we walk. Mm. We don't have to run, we can walk. Mm. And we can get this thing done according to God's will and purpose. Anyway, Pentecostals talk a lot. Come on. Kind of you, you, you're sounding like a mystic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, speaking, yeah. speaking from that heart of the intimate relationship the personal relationship the experience yes. as the mystics have throughout history yes. and mm -hmm. yet here you are a bishop 
and an institution builder. <laughs> so tell me, why does a mystic build institutions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, you know, I have found out something about the history of reformations. Mm. Mm. That reformation, sometimes I draw, when I teach, particularly in the seminaries, that these concentric circles, imagine one outer, one in the middle and one in the, in the center. And I, I style the one in the center as society, as we understand it. The one just outside of that, I style as religion and faith. And this is for our country, but for some of the other places where we have all been and worked. And then on the outside is what I call the margins. Hmm. And for most of my life, people that have dwelled on the margins, because that's who I'm called to serve. There's no question about that as a priority. Doesn't mean that we're not available to many for many reasons, but as a priority. Those that are on the margins are always trying to get in, mm. come up with some kind of way to be worthy enough to be accepted and acceptable mm. and to in some way mimic the manifest destiny type power that mm -hmm. they see among those that are in those inner circles, in that the circle of religion and faith and the circle of society. What I have said to people many times is that that's what we have to break. If we are going to develop institutions mm. that are going to meet the needs of people, these institutions must be flexible. Mm. We have to build with a back door. Mm. Knowing that the whole thing may be wrong by this time next week. Come on. We put it all together. We had a meeting. We made some notes. We, we, you know, we came in with some bricks and mortar and tried to hook that thing up only to find out it's not fluid enough for the spirit of God. Ooh. So we do bricks and mortar. That's what we do. But then we ended up, end up losing all of it. And, and the reason I use those concentric circles is because I, I put an arrow that points where people are trying to get to the middle. And then I U-turn it and say, what you need to do is go back, not trying to impress the, these bastions of society and religion, build something on the margins out here where space is, mm. is mm -hmm. so that if we have to change tonight, mm. we can change. Mm. We have structure, a structure without facades. You see, I, I was, I was raised in, in San Francisco. I'm, I'm a, uh, born and raised in San Francisco. I know about earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Earthquakes don't bother us like they do other people. We could be sitting talking like this. We had one uh, the other day. We have little ones all the time. We could be sitting talking and all of a sudden everything go like that, right? And we all say, oh, that's probably about a 3.5. And then we just keep <laughs> talking. I mean, because it's nothing to us because I was raised, you get under your desk, you know, you, if, if there's a bad one, I know what to do, get in the door frame because I, I've been through many of them in my life. Like other people have her, her, tornadoes and hurricanes and things. We have earthquakes, that's a California reality. Well, I only said that to say, we have to build our buildings with internal strength. Mm. Retrofitting is what it's called. Mm -hmm. mm. We, have to, we have to tie our roofs down with bolts we have to build underneath our buildings. And before we pour our foundations, we have to put rebar, steel under it. The concept is so that when the building moves, mm. it moves almost like a palm tree. It can move and come back to its original position. If mm. the infrastructure, you hear me now as the old yeah. folks say, you hear me in the Holy Ghost. So that the infrastructure can remain even mm. if all the facade falls off. Mm. Mm. This mm. is what I would say to people who are builders, like myself, who are doing movement work. Build it understanding that there may be some stuff on here that a good shaking is gonna knock off, but what oh. is the foundation? What is the infrastructure? Mm. And if our justice work is based on love, and peace and equality and inclusion, then we can last through a crazy administration in DC and perhaps a less crazy administration in DC. 
and we will still do the work. You hear me, brother? Yes. We can last if if things are going. We if we win what it is that we are fighting for for justice, or if we have to come back another day. Mm. Mm. If we go to jail, we come out. We we still win if we are at the Pettus Bridge. We get beat up today. Mm. We go home. We we get some we get some some curdicure ointment, which is what they used to use back then. Put a bandage on our forehead, and then we come back mm. and we fight another day. Mm. Why? Why? Because our internal mm. is strong enough. Now, that's why I call our organization a fellowship and not a denomination. Mm. We don't have a, a book of order. Mm. When I get in the water for baptism and take people in the water with me, we baptize by immersion for all kinds of reasons, I have to tell you. But when I get in the water, I ask people, what do you want me to say over you? Mm. Somebody say, well, baptize. I'm going to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I say, you, this is what we'll do. I'm going in the water with you. And I'm only 5'2", so it's quite something what happens to me. Uh, that's people have to time it down. <laughs> you know, it's quite something. But anyway, so we go in the water together. Somebody else says, I want to be, uh, I want to be baptized in the name of God, spirit, and servant. I want to be baptized in the name of, I want to call the names of my ancestors and my Orisha. I want to call the name. And the thing is, people say, well, you baptize people. You got to baptize them in the name of Jesus. I said, no. What I have to do is baptize them. If we're all in a public and communal baptism, in, in and say over them what their faith path is. Because I don't think that the Jesus that I know would have found it problematic that people can see the essence and the spirit of God mm. by other names. I don't see that mm. that would have been problematic for him, mm. right? So I get, I take them in the water, and then at the end of the day, we all wet. Everybody wet. Everybody wet. So we got the same wet, if you understand what I'm saying, with something different, mm. perhaps that is authentic to our belief systems. And some of it is a con com conglomeration of all of those things at the same time. I have come to understand the power of my um, Afro African, um, African indigenous faith, hmm. my Native American Cherokee indigenous faith. Hmm. I have come to understand that the 12% of me that is Celtic, that comes from an Irish background, I've come to understand the spirituality of that stream hmm. into me. And, my, and then my evil, my African self, I have a did my people know God before they were Christianized? Of course they did. God by another name, still God. <laughs> God's not stuck. We're stuck. So when we get in the water, mm. we dispense with that. And we invite the spirit of the divine mm. to connect us in ways that my religion doesn't have to compete with yours. And I know, I'm, again, I'm talking too long, but let me just say one last thing to you about this. And that is that when we pray, it is amazing to me that there are people praying diligently for me to fail. Hmm. And there hmm. are people praying diligently among my colleagues for them to fail, for the folks that are praying for me to fail. <laughs> <laughs> and, and imagine you're, you, you know, you're God listening. Say, well, here's a hmm. whole pack of them saying they know me. <laughs> And they're praying against this whole pack of them over here who say they know me. It's conservative, liberal, that, that whole, um, you understand. You really understand. I know you understand because our paths, we, we've come from a long way, you know? Conservative, liberal, talking to God to destroy in some way <laughs> the other people. Mm. And so we, so we have this dance. We have a, a conservative administration we think is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And then we have a, another administration we think is more, you know, and so then what happens next? So perhaps we'll get another one, you know, there's a, and then we'll get another one. 
and it's it's like a 50 50 split and imagine imagine at the end of the day it's like being in a war like the gulf war mm. where muslim mothers mm -hmm. muslima Mus muslim mothers are praying that their sons will come back mm. from the war alive mm. christian mothers are praying that their sons will come back from the war alive who does God hear and why? Mm. Why? When in many cases, the sins are equal. Mm. Mm. The love is equal. The manifest destiny, the walk, the desire to rule, to be, to be the world power is equal. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be over and thinks that somehow even when they are wrong because it's them, their wrong is right. And when the others are wrong, their wrong is wrong. And they're all praying to the same God. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it mm. is now in some ways with Christendom in this country. Mm -hmm. And I think that we've hurt ourselves in this last election. That what we have done, I think that we have abdicated in many ways, even the power of the religious right. Hmm. Because the intention was to force and require that God agree hmm. with the politics and policies that suggest that they are done in God's name. Hmm. Hmm. What happens at the end of the day? People of God have got to go to the garden. Hallelujah. I felt I had Come a good call. Yes. Mm. Got to stop politicizing God and go to the garden. Mm. Whether we're conservative or liberal or every conceivable thing in between or what day of the week we are, all of these different things, you're going to have to go to the garden mm. and hear from the divine. Mm. Or we are not going to be believable to the generation that is coming after us. Mm. They already say mm. they're not religious. Mm -hmm. They are relational. They are spiritual. But they don't want this. They don't want this. We, we see church often as a completely choreographed experience. Super powerful. 12,000 people. Everything happens exactly on time one thing after another after another after another you all understand what i'm saying that's mm -hmm. that's that's the thing that people want to show that they're successful mm -hmm. as preachers and pastors and then when they say something's going to happen and it doesn't and they call for the angels from africa and south america and all that to make it happen mm. and it doesn't happen mm. they have a crisis of credibility come on and our young people are saying, mm -hmm. I don't want any of that. Mm -hmm. I invite everybody that is listening to us today, go to the garden. Mm -hmm. Go and spend some time with the divine. And don't go in the garden looking for some web to be weaponized against those that you disagree with. Mm -hmm. Let's go into the garden and find the heart and the will of God. Mm. And there's, there is a passage of scripture that we have used a lot of us a lot of times, right? And we're connected, we're connected to it. That, that God will strengthen, settle, and establish us mm. if we are connected to the heart of God, mm. right? What do I want? I want to do justice, I want to love mercy. I want to walk humbly. Yes, Lord. What yeah. What is it that I desire the most? I I really want the the spirit of God and the presence of God to show me daily and then corporately, nationally and internationally. I want to do flyovers. I want a panoramic view mm. <laughs> of what is God's intention so mm. that my intention will be connected to God's intention. Mm. So mm. that's a long answer to a question, but- Oh, you have given us a gift. God yes. bless you. Thank and you. And a lot to chew on.
bless you and bless you. Thank you for this word. Let's uh let's conclude our prayer together. Yes. With the prayer that the Lord taught us. Yes. Our Father, Our Father who yes, art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be hallowed thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this, us day, this day, day our daily bread, and forgive yes. us our trespasses, yes. as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you knelt to wash from our feet the dirt out of which you made us. Teach us to humbly serve one another so the world may know we are your disciples. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you yes. wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our door. It's a little blessing for the Celtic part of you there. I Ooh, got yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Thank Let you, go. Bishop. My joy. Thank you. So y'all, just a few things as we go out here. Thank y'all for joining us. We'll be back at it at the first day of every month and we get to sit at the feet of a special friend every every month this was real special i didn't know i was gonna be taking notes during morning prayer bishop but i got my notes here mm -hmm. we got a lot of things on the horizon at red letter christians we're gonna have a reflection on good friday tomorrow yes. what it means that at the heart of our faith there is an executed savior so mm -hmm. join us tomorrow at two on Monday, we're going to do our Easter concert on Monday. We got 20 different artists that are lined up to sing songs mm -hmm. of redemption, survival, resurrection. So spoken word, worship teams. Uh, so join us. It's all uh, going to be live streamed on Monday night at 7. And then we got our book of the month, which it's April 1st. So I'm going to tell y'all the book of the month this month is Anthea Butler, Dr. Butler's book, White yes. Evangelical Racism. So grab That's that book. That's a powerful book. That's a powerful yes. one. Yes, it She's is. going to be with us at the end of the month, last Sunday of, of April. She'll be joining uh, us for that conversation. And then every month we've been talking about a big issue, a social justice issue. This month on our faith forum, we're going to talk about immigration because we still have a crisis on our borders. Yes. And we yes. still have children that are separated from their families that need to be reunited. So join us with uh, Jenny Yang and Alexia Salvatierra. Uh, we're going to have a faith forum on immigration to talk about that. Um, so that that's, we got a lot going on and uh, it's always a gift to be together at the first of the month. Can, can we ask you Bishop to send us out with a benediction? Oh my. Uh, let's see. Um, how about a, a good old um, Negro spiritual as they are called. Okay. Let's do it. Um, that I sing to myself sometimes, the old saints used to sing this. It says, <clears throat> intimacy with God. God stays in my room. God stays in my room. And God gives me all my medicine mm. in my room. And the old, old saints said it because they couldn't afford to go to the doctors or the doctors would not receive black people. God heals in my room. God heals in my room. And God gives me all my medicine in, in my room. And now may the peace of God, 
and the healing of God that passes understanding. Keep your hearts, keep your minds, keep your spirit. But what has God given us? Not a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Be blessed as you journey. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Love you. Love you too. Take good care. Thank you. Bless you.